Some people actually think na yung pag-chop is a bit selfish. Kasi nga kapag wala akong dala anything, phone ko pa yung pinang-chop ko. Hindi sila mahilig mag-hi or mag-smile. Singaporeans daw love to complain. Medyo nakakabobo siya sa English. Cannot like that one. A typical Singaporean would say, So how? And napansin ko lately, ganun na rin ako. Hey guys, it's me Red and I hope you're ready for another video. So for today, I decided to finally do another episode of our OFW series. If you guys remember previously, I shared with you how I landed a job here in Singapore. And our second episode was all about cost of living. And I know you guys are asking about salary, yung mga more in-depth videos about how to find a job here, mga tips and tricks. But I thought it would be fun to do this video kung saan share ko sa inyo some of the weird habits that I picked up by living here in Singapore for two years now. Actually, some are not that weird. Acceptable naman siya sa mga ibang countries, ganyan. But I'm just sharing my experiences. I don't mean to offend any Singaporean or any person. This is just an unpopular opinion coming from a Filipino expat like myself. But before we start, for those of you who are new here, my name is Red. I'm a Filipino expat here in Singapore and I've been living and working here for the past two years. The first habit that I acquired simula nung nagstay ako dito and actually napansin ko na din to as a tourist kasi I've been to Singapore as a tourist a couple of times before I decided to work here and back then I remember vividly sobrang naiweirdohan ako because I kept on hearing people calling elderly as aunties and uncles. So back then I was thinking magkakamag-anak ba lahat ng taga dito? But no guys, hindi siya ganun. Here in Singapore, it's common for people to address the elderly as aunties and uncles. Kahit hindi mo naman talaga chuhin or chahin yun. It's actually polite to do so. So kapag kasasakay ka ng grab, kapag matanda na yung driver, normally we call them uncle. So pabibili ka ng food sa hawker, yung mga nasa cashier, yung mga nagsiserve ng food, we call them auntie. Though you also have to be careful not to offend anyone kasi of course, kanya-kanyang preference yan. Merong mga iba na mga aunties and uncles na ayaw nilang tawagin silang ganun kasi feeling nila siguro bata pa sila tapos ang tingin mo sa kanila matanda, di ba? So ako, I just call them auntie and uncle kapag talagang matanda na. Yung mga may white hair na and all. Just to be safe. Another habit which I think is not that weird kasi ginagawa ko naman to even nung nasa Philippines pa ako using chopsticks and soup spoon instead of regular spoon and fork. We all know that Singapore is a melting pot of a lot of cultures. So halo-halo talaga yung food. There are a lot of Chinese food, Malay food, Indonesian, Indian, Filipino. I don't know, nagulat na lang ako one time I found myself gravitating more towards soup spoon and chopsticks over regular spoon and fork. Kasi kapag noodles yung kakainin mo especially kung merong sabaw I find that I enjoy my food more if I'll use chopsticks instead of regular spoon and fork. But again, that can just be me. If you want, you can still use regular spoon and fork. Meron naman din talaga. The third habit that I'll talk about is what they call kiasu here in Singapore. Here in Singapore, everything is fast-paced. Most people are laging nagmamadali. And napansin ko lately, ganun na rin ako. For example, kapag magla-lunch break ka, ganyan, sobrang nagmamadali sila to find seats. Dito pumapasok yung tinatawag nila na chope, C-H-O-P-E. Bago sila umorder ng food sa restaurants or food courts, ang ginagawa nila, nag-iiwan sila ng tissue, ng mga discount cards, tumbler, or whatever na gamit mo para ma-reserve mo yung table bago ka umorder ng food. And since marami akong office mates na Singaporeans, medyo na-adapt ko talaga yon. Minsan nga kapag wala akong dala anything, phone ko pa yung pinang chop ko. Kasi generally safe naman talaga dito sa Singapore. Wala pa naman akong instance na nawala ng gamit or anything. But of course, that's still wrong and you still have to be careful. Some people actually think na yung pag chop is a bit selfish. Kasi hindi ka pa nga naka-order. Nag-reserve ka na ng table, di ba? But I understand that some people are doing that. Kasi baka naka-lunch time lang sila and limited lang yung time nila to have lunch. Kaya nila ginagawa yon. But for days na hindi ka naman nakaganon, I get why some people get upset also. Another habit is drinking tap water straight from the faucet. Water here in Singapore is very safe. Excluding those people who have overly sensitive stomachs like yung mga nagkaroon ng amibiasis as a child or si Jel na kahit anong kainin, sumasakit yung chan. But generally, a lot of people here in Singapore are drinking straight from the faucet. Although ngayon, umorder kami ng mineral water. Hindi ko alam, nakasanayan na lang din namin. But before we did, I was drinking straight from the faucet and wala naman nangyari sa akin anything kasi sobrang filtered ng water dito sa Singapore. And kung hindi naman maarte yun, chan mo, you can definitely go away with it. 
Another habit that I picked up is drinking coffee every morning, which I know is not weird at all. But the weird part is, in some hawkers, sa plastic bag nila nilalagay yung coffee instead na sa cup. I'm talking about hot coffee, guys, as in mainit na kape. Doon nila nilalagay sa plastic na may pangsara or pwede mo rin lagyan ng straw. Tapos sinistraw nila yung hot coffee, would you imagine? I find that it was weird, pero I get why, kasi medyo convenient siyang dalin kaysa sa cup. And it's even more weird for me, kasi if you're a regular viewer, you would know na I used to be a lover of tea more than coffee but now the tables have turned and sobrang adi ko na sa kape if you haven't tried Singaporean coffee it's the best Another habit that I found myself doing, simula nung tumira ako dito sa Singapore, I started walking faster. Hindi ko alam, siguro kasi nga fast pace lahat dito. I don't know, nasanay na lang siguro ako kasi mabilis din maglakad yung mga office mates ko. Pero yung mga ibang Filipino friends namin dati, nagugulat kasi parang ambilis ko daw maglakad. Hinahabol daw ba ako, ganyan. Pero hindi, feeling ko nag-adjust lang talaga ng kusa yung katawan ko or yung mga legs ko kasi ambilis ng mga escalators dito. Noong unang punta ko nga dito as a tourist, talaga parang matatapilo ko every time sasakay ako ng escalator. Kung sanay kayo sa escalator natin sa Philippines, sobrang bilis niya. Another habit that you guys should bear in mind, kung sa Pilipinas, keep right always tayo. Dito, always keep left naman. Kasi yung mga roads nila dito, even yung steering wheel ng mga sasakyan nila ay nasa kabilang side. So, kung nasanay kayo sa Pilipinas na always keep right, dito sa Singapore, most often than not, it's always keep left. Like kapag sasakay kayo ng escalator and gusto nyo nakatayo lang, ayaw nyo maglakad, sa left dapat. Yung mga ganun. Moving on to another habit that I picked up, which is going out without anything and just my phone. Promise, there are a lot of days na lalabas ako na yung phone ko lang yung dalawa wala ako dalang wallet, cash or whatnot. Kasi here in Singapore, everything is automated. You can pay using your phone. Basa na ako nek yung credit card mo. Pati transpo, pwede mong bayaran using your phone or yung iWatch mo. Pwede kang komain sa labas, magshopping, kung ano mang gusto mong gawin, and magbayad using just your phone or your iWatch, which I find very amazing and efficient na sana ma-adopt din ng Philippines soon. Another habit is hindi ako nawawala ng tissue sa bag ko or kapag lalabas ako to have lunch, lagi akong merong tissue sa aking pocket kasi tissue in Singapore is not free. Di ba sa atin sa Pinas pagkakain ka sa Jollibee, laging libre yung tissue is serve kasama ng spoon and fork or nasa table na minsan. Unfortunately, dito hindi. You can buy tissue for a couple of cents from the stalls na nagtitinda ng mga drinks sa hawker or minsan from the restaurants mismo. Yung mga nakalagay nila na wet tissue sa table, magugulat na lang kayo pag ginamit nyo, meron siyang Another weird habit is using a lot of acronyms kasi generally speaking, sobrang hilig ng Singaporeans na maggamit ng acronyms sa lahat ng bagay, kahit sa work or mapa food, like Shaolong Bao, ang tawag nila XLB. Yung OIC, kapag sa text, kinagawa nilang OIC. Yung mga lugar or countries, lagi naka-acronyms, SG, PH, JB, KL. I don't know, napansin ko, they have a habit of shortening everything. Hindi lang sa acronyms. Mamaya share ko sa inyo yung iba. But another weird habit is, napansin ko, I eat less fast food. Kasi yung mga office mates ko, they are all Singaporeans. Ako lang po yung Pinoy. And nung time na nag-office pa kami, we only eat fast food. Marami na yung once a week. Kapag nagtatanungan kami, minsan saan kami kakain, ganyan. Tapos magsasuggest ako ng, let's say, Jollibee. Sabihin nila, Kasi baka ka fast food lang natin two days ago. Yun pa yung isang napansin ko. Kasi a lot of Singaporeans are very health conscious. Kaya gusto nila, as much as they can, they eat healthy. Kaya kung mapapansin nyo, tumaba tayo. Kasi, ang tagal na kaming work from home at nagkakasundo kami ng mga housemates natin especially si Lajel sa mga kainan isang aya lang game na e yung mga office mates ko gusto nila mga yong tofu soup lang ganyan so ayun Speaking of office, another habit na napansin ko, here in Singapore, not saying hi is not perceived to be rude. Kasi sanay ako sa Pinas na lahat nag-hi ako. Kapag nasa work ka, for example, lahat ng mga salubong mo mag-hi ka or kakaway ka, ngingiti ka, di ba? Or kahit sa labas, halimbawa, kumakain lang kayo sa mall. May nakita kang schoolmate or workmate. Kahit di mo naman talaga nakakausap mag-hi ka or hello ka, di ba? Hindi naman siguro lahat, but generally, not saying hi here in Singapore is not perceived to be rude. So medyo nakuha ko siya kapag ka nasa office especially kapag sasakay ka ng lift or ng elevator, hindi sila mahilig mag-hi or mag-smile. Another habit is calling your superiors at work by their names. Kasi ba diba sa pinasanay tayo na kapag yung mga managers natin or yung mga chief, we call them sir, ma'am. Pero pa-approve naman po yung sinend ko na 
Amen. Dito napansin ko kahit na sino, kahit manager mo yan, or chief ng marketing yan, or CEO, hindi ko alam kung sa amin lang or marami bang ganun, but sa office namin, we just call everyone by their name. Let's say yung manager mo, ang pangalan ay Nambet. You don't say Sir Nambet. Nambet lang, go na. Si Nambet talaga yung nagsabi ko. Another habit at work, always being on the dot. Like ako, my shift is always 9am to 6pm. And naalala ko nung nag-work ako sa Philippines, just because hanggang 6pm lang yung work mo, ya, yeah, alis ka na ng 6pm. Mahilig yung mga Pinoy sa mga mag-aantayan. Pag ikaw yung unang umalis, pag-uusapan ka na ng office mates. Ay, napansin niyo ba si Babe? Lagi siyang on the dot o maalis. Dito okay lang yun, guys. Actually, nag-uunahan pa silang lumabas at mag-tap out ng office. And that's okay. Hindi nila iba voice out yun against you kapag ka nag-performance appraisal ka it's totally fine. Kasi dito sa Singapore, they really value your time. Another habit is, dito kasi sa Singapore, everything is in WhatsApp. Mapa personal, work-related, or kahit ano pa yan. All the messaging, all the transactions, I through WhatsApp. So if you're a very private person, na sa Pinas ayaw mong ibigay yung number mo sa mga office mates mo, hindi pwede dito yon. Or pwede siguro kumuha ka ng ibang phone. Kasi even sa mga clients nyo, WhatsApp mo talaga na number yung ibibigay mo. I don't know, that's just how it goes here. And na-adopt ko na din siya. Hindi ko alam, pero napansin ko sa sarili ko, another habit na na-adopt ko is naging voucher whore na ako. Like, kapag may bibili na ako online or kapag may check out ako online, lagi naghahanap muna ako ng vouchers bago ako mag-check out. Kasi ang daming mga voucher-voucher dito or mga apps like Itigo, Shopback, hindi na sponsored ha, pero ang dami nilang mga ganun dito, especially yung mga medyo may edad, yung mga auntie-auntie na. Laging gulat na gulat sila kapag may binili ka na full price kasi mahilig sila sa mga discounts and vouchers. Which is of course a good thing naman, walang masama na maghanap ng discounts. It doesn't make you a less of a person. Kaya, I'm happy na adopt ko siya and feeling ko, I will still do so kahit na bumalik ako ng Pinas or kung pumunta ako sa ibang countries. Before I even worked here, I was reading a lot of articles about working in Singapore. And I remember I read from some articles na Singaporeans daw love to complain. Nabasa ko lang po, hindi sa akin ang galing. Pero I believe tayong mga Pilipino rin naman ay mahilig mag-complain. Hindi naman Singaporeans lang. Pero ang napansin ko kasi, sobrang meticulous nila dito. Like kapag kumain ka sa isang restaurant, or nagpagupit ka sa isang salon, or nagpa-facial ka, talagang parang mga critic sila. And kapag hindi nila nagustuhan yung service, or yung food, or whatever, ever na binili nila or pinagkagasto sa nila, they will really complain. Uso dito yung talaga magsusulat ng negative review sa Google or magbablog about it, magra-rant online. And part kasi yun ang trabaho ko as digital marketing, negative reputation management. So, sobrang lala nung mga negative reviews. Talagang may nababasa ako minsan mga 3 paragraphs na reviews. Grabe lang po, ang dami nilang time mag-rant. And medyo na-adapt ko siya kasi from time to time, di naman lagi. Napansin ko, nagra-rant na rin ako online or nagsusulat na rin ako ng negative reviews sa mga restaurants, sa mga pinupuntahan ko na hindi ko nagustuhan. Well, by doing so, may pros and cons naman kasi mabibigyan mo ng idea yung mga gustong kumain dun sa restaurant na yon na nagbigay ka ng negative review. Or mabibigyan mo ng constructive criticism yung may-ari ng restaurant, for example, to improve their food. So may good din naman, ba? Another habit that I found myself doing is bringing an umbrella whenever I can. Kasi dito sa Singapore, Beshi, unfortunately, budol si weather app. Kahit tinan mo yung weather app at makita mo na sunny the whole day, magugulat ka na lang, biglang uulan. Pero yung mga ulan naman nila dito, usually naglalas lang ng 20 to 30 minutes. Tapos biglang wala na siya. Maaraw na naman ulit. So, it's always nice to bring an umbrella whenever you can. Not just for rains, kasi sobrang init naman kapag katirik na tirik yung araw dito. And it can really damage your skin. Kaya it's important also to put sunscreen kada lalabas kayo ng bahay kasi ang init dito pero ulan din ng ulan. And lastly, yung habit talaga na hindi ko talaga naiwasan is makuha yung accent and yung way of speaking nila or yung tinatawag nila na Singlish. Well, there's nothing wrong about it but if you're a very grammar savvy na person or English professor ka, medyo nakakabobo siya sa English. Kasi napansin ko, kagaya ng sinabi ko kanina sa acronyms, mahilig sila mag-shorten ng mga words and sentences. Hindi lang sa acronyms actually, pati sa normal conversations. Like for example, magpapabook ka ng table for a dinner. Diba normally you would call and say, Hello, I'm calling to book a table for four at this timing, blah blah blah. Pero sa Singaporeans, they would just say, Hi, can book for four? Hindi ko alam, mahilig sila mag-shorten ng words or ng sentences. And yun kasi yung naiintindihan din nila, kaya ma-adopt mo talaga. Hindi lang words, there are sentences, phrases. And plano kong gumawa ng separate episode for it, yung mga Singlish words and phrases na na-adopt ko. But just to share with you some, they like to end sentences with one. For example, instead of saying, 
that's not acceptable or this one is wrong can you change that they will say it like cannot like that one yun ba yung isa yung can or cannot na sikat na sikat kasi yung can nila dito basically means yes and yung cannot means no so can or cannot hindi lang yun pati sa mga pronunciation like yung card or car park hindi nila maintindihan kapag sinabi mong card car park they pronounce it as cart car park kasi <laughs> nagmamadali kapak this means when you're explaining to your boss or to your workmate after nung mag-explain diba normally you will say so what can we do about this or how can we deal with this matter a typical Singaporean would say so how alam mo yun sobrang hilig nila mag shortcut siguro part na rin yun yung pagvavalue nila ng time kasi mas mabilis nga naman sabihin at maintindihan diba they also don't know some terms kasi influence sila ng UK so pag nagtanong ka where's the CR hindi nila maintindihan instead of CR they know toilet instead of elevator they know lift instead of take out they say take away instead of dine in they say having here and a lot of other phrases and words na plano ko ang gawa ng separate episode soon so kung gusto nyo yun comment down below guys but that ends our hashtag OFW series episode today I hope ay na-enjoy nyo and may nakuha kayong tip or two from this video if you did don't forget to like this video and share this to your friends especially to those na interested din mag-apply or mag-land ng job here in Singapore if you're new here to my channel please consider subscribing to be part of the hashtag red squad we do a lot of content here hindi lang yung OFW series mayroon tayong regular vlogs every Saturdays 5pm and every Wednesdays 5pm ini interchange ko yung OFW series luxury and other niche content wag nyo na rin kalimutan i-take yung notification bell para notified ka every time we have new uploads like this one so yun lang naman once again thank you so much for watching this video and I hope to see you on the next one bye guys bye